When I work on a street in Soho that someone got attacked on, it scares the shit out of me. Why don't you, Riyad, why don't you learn if you move from him? If you want to protect yourself from there, you know, self-defense. I know, but I don't like fighting either. Yeah, I never did like fighting, but recently I'm kind of thinking I should probably learn to defend myself because in the last four years, LGBT hate crimes have soared by 144%, and that is in the UK alone. Sure, some heteros will have you believe that everything is A-OK. -okay. That's nice, but the reality of being queer in 2019 is a completely different story. It ain't easy. A homophobic attack on a London bus that left a lesbian couple in hospital with horrific injuries. They grabbed hold of me, got me in a headlock, um, to the point I couldn't breathe. And then I get basically nearly attacked with a bottle. Two out of three LGBT couples feel too uncomfortable to hold hands in public. One in five LGBT people have been a victim of a hate crime. Out of those, four in five go unreported. And the situation is even worse for queer people of color or members of the trans community, with two in five of them experiencing a hate crime because of who they are. But get this, in London, there is a martial arts group run by queer people designed to teach members of the community how to defend themselves in the event of an attack. So, I gathered a few of my favorite queers and we headed on down to learn some, is that how I do it? Jiu-Jitsu self-defense. The Ishigaki Jiu-Jitsu Club have been meeting every week for the past 25 years. Not only is it about self-defense, it's also a social gathering. Ronan Winters has been part of the group for 12 years. He's a black belt and has taken us on for a very, very basic level of self-defense. Now, listen up. In this next bit, we're going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on some pretty basic self-defense moves. Remember, these are not to be used to intentionally hurt anybody. It is just to protect yourself in the event of an attack. Also in there, some pretty heartfelt stories of some really difficult situations that my friends have been put in because of homophobic or transphobic attacks. So we're going to do some like really short, quick stuff you can do that just makes them back off so you can run. So, I'm going to grab you, Okay. come under my hand, yeah. and flip it over. Like that. Okay. So this time, you're going to push his wrist slowly up, oh. and lean into it like Ooh. that. My friend Jack is unapologetically himself. He wears his heart and his identity on his sleeve. In the past, he's been the victim of a violent homophobic attack. I was on the way home from like some kind of LGBTQ event uh, and there was you know a glitter station uh, and so I kind of got decked out. I passed by these like three guys, they were probably just like kind of late teenagers and they asked me for a cigarette. As I was close enough to say no, they kind of saw the stuff was on my face, so they started talking about that. I just kept on walking and then they kept on following me. I eventually started like kind of properly like jogging away and then eventually running and they chased me down they pushed me to the ground they like kicked me and like spat on me and called me a faggot they didn't take any money they didn't take my phone they didn't mug me they literally just like lashed out in like a homophobic way it was weird i kind of wasn't surprised by the attack it was almost like i'd been kind of waiting for something like this to happen to me because i was wearing nail polish or wearing glitter or something like that so we're going to start the same way and this time, you're going to take your free hand and pretend you're holding up a tray of drinks. So you should be familiar with this. Ho holding a tray, and you're going to bring the tray under his elbow, push his elbow up, and then push his elbow down. Yes! <laughs> the three of us leaving the brewers now. No one will want to mess with us. That's what it's like. Come at me. I know one move. There are some times where I think, oh, I shouldn't be holding my boyfriend's hand in this area of London, just because of the stories that I've heard of people that I know getting hurt. But I just think it's just really important to have visibility, so I'm going to continue to hold my boyfriend's hand. and. And that's why I wanted to join something like this, because uh, if every, anything did happen, I just wanted to be prepared. So you've all very successfully gotten to here, but we want to now kind of try to lock them down a bit. So we're going to do a very basic lock. So you've made this sort of triangle here. So what you're going to do is walk into this triangle. So you're leaning against his side, facing the same way as him. Gently press down on his shoulder and then straighten the arm up. Like that. We all signed waivers. Yeah. <laughs> you can't sue me, can you? Okay. Get ready for this then. <laughs> Can we grab you again? Yeah. 
<laughs> and then I do it. Really good. Is that all right? That yeah. Okay. You're pro. This is my gorgeous non-binary friend Jamie, a journalist and editor living and working in London. Now, as you can see, their look is stunning, but also unusual. And because of that, they've been a target in the past. The most prominent one was last summer. A group of like three men came over, and I was in like a long maxi dress, and they just bent down and like put their torso up. Like one of them just kind of went up and was like, "What's under here?" It's things like that that always are on the verge of happening, but I never know if they're going to happen. So when it does happen, you do kind of get shook. I've had um, bottles of urine thrown at me before. Because you're gay? Yes. People in drag, people uh, who are just out and expressing themselves, put themselves at risk, put themselves out there. Um, so it's really important to be able to feel confident about that. I feel more confident knowing that I can handle myself. Right. So you go one, two, three, brings them forward, change your hand, four. Use the same hand, grab his hand here. Like that. You're going to use that in a minute. Okay. okay. Cool. Note to self, do not bring your cutie boyfriend along to a self-defense class because he will distract you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too distracted by how beautiful you are. Oh, shut up. Oh, I love you. We've turned into that couple that make out in the middle of a karate class. I Sorry, jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu. Someone grabs you, you grab them back. The way to do this is you bring two fingers together over each other and bend them slightly. What you're going to do is push that into the neck, the, like the little soft bit here. You push in and then you push down. Oh! Like that. <laughs> Go on, you can do it. Oh, oh, it's horrible. Oh, I hate it. Like, like you mean it. You have to kind of like push, push in and push down. Oh my God. How is he doing that? You're not doing it. You're getting there. Oh my god, I can't do it. That's, you're very good. Wow. They, someone's grabbed you. You're gonna just relax both hands here on their, the crook of their elbow. And you're going to, what it looks like you're doing is pushing the elbow down, but you're not. You're gonna bring the elbow into your stomach, like that. And when you feel the elbow attached to your stomach, walk back with it, like that. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah it works. Good, good, good. Nice. Really good. Finished. Done. Yeah. Over. Kaput. <laughs> bye bye. Homophobe. You hear the whisperings often in the corner, and you're great at just going, don't care, I'm, I'm moving on. But I find it. Yeah, but I find it really hard because I see it as a very personal attack on the love yeah. that we have and the connection that we have and it's so hard to let this horrible stranger in on your little gorgeous world that you've created. Mm -hmm. Look, I have lost count of the amount of times that I've been called a faggot out in the street and other words. It's never led to a physical attack but for me in my head it's a matter of not if but when. What street corner is it going to happen on? Is it going to happen when Josh is by my side? How bad will it be? Those are real fears and thoughts that go through my head and probably millions of queer people around the world. Thankfully though, doing this class with my friends has made me feel a little bit more in control. I am back in the driving seat and in the event of it, I can hopefully flip it on its head and get out of there. The details for Ishigaki are down below. If you've had an experience like this, I would say go to this class. Um, or go to a class like it and maybe it might make you feel more confident again. It might boost your social confidence in some shape or form. Be safe out there. Remember, it is great and it is a gift to be LGBTQ+. It's a special, special thing. Thank you so much for watching. Please share the video, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Big love.